Meanwhile, Israel is saying that it's freed a captive in southern Gaza. It says Qaid Farhan al-Qadi was recovered during a complex rescue operation. The Israeli army released videos saying he's in a stable condition after being checked. A group representing the families of the captives is pushing for a ceasefire deal to ensure that their relatives return home alive. They say military operations alone can't free everyone taken captive more than 10 months ago. Israel's military spokesman Daniel Hagari says the Israeli forces will use all opportunities to ensure the return of the captives. There are still 108 hostages whose families are still waiting to hear news that their loved ones are home. And they should know that we will not rest. We will not rest until we fulfill our mission to bring all our hostages back home. Mahmoud El-Masri is Professor of Media Studies at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies and joins me now. What do you make of what we've heard from the Israelis so far about this operation? Well, it's interesting that the, um, the organization representing uh, the captives uh, is saying that they want a ceasefire. Uh, and that's consistent with a lot of uh, what political scientists have been saying over the last several months. Israel has been far more successful when it's been willing to engage in diplomacy. Back in November, there was a temporary uh, uh, pause in the fighting. Uh, an agreement was reached, and through that agreement, Israel was able to get back about 100 of its captives um, from, from Gaza. Now, if you look at the last 11 months in total, uh, it's actually been quite uh, risky quite dangerous, not just for Palestinians, obviously, but for those captives in, in Israel. These rescue operations have not been successful. Israel's only been able to rescue 10 uh, captives. They've killed far more uh, in their bombing. And Mariam, if you remember, a few months ago, there were three people who were out uh, sort of missing in Gaza. They were waving white surrender flags, and the Israeli military uh, shot them dead. Mm -hmm. And initially, you know, the military thought that they were Palestinians. They sort of have a almost an open kill policy for, for Palestinians. It turned out that they were Israeli captives. So um, that just underscores the extent to which a lot of this has failed. But I guess that's because as the war has continued all these months, 10 months now, the priority is to degrade and destroy Hamas rather than freeing uh, the Israelis that remain in Gaza. Well, I might push back a little bit on that. I, I don't know how realistic even the Israeli uh, uh, political elites think eliminating Hamas or even degrading them in any significant way. You know, I don't know how if they think that that's even possible. I guess it's a priority for Netanyahu. It may be, or a lot of that might just be smokescreen, right? I mean, we you have to understand that these these far right ministers that are allied with Netanyahu, this entire far right coalition, their their goal is something much greater. They want uh, this idea of greater Israel. They are openly talking about ethnic cleansing. They want to displace or forcibly remove all of the Palestinians uh, from Gaza, either into Egypt or into Jordan or, or somewhere else. So that's the much larger project here. As for Hamas, Hamas seems to be gr growing stronger or be at, at least just as strong as they were 11 months ago. Thank you very much, Professor Mohammed El Masri, for joining us. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.